sometimes it sucks getting old, right? And we make choices at 18, 19, 20 years old, and fast forward seven, eight, 10 years later, and then we realize the path that we chose just doesn't make much sense anymore. And so you try to look for a silver lining and you think to yourself, what if I could go back and do things over again? Well, we can't go back. We are where we are. And so instead you ask yourself, is the window closed? Is it too late to take a different turn? Or am I just too old? Heck, you might ask yourself those questions for a few years and time just continues to go on by. I think it was a year and a half for me and I continue to ask myself, am I too old to go back to school for computer science? Am I too old to learn how to code? And the answer is no. And I'm talking to anyone who's watching. Whether you're 25, 45, 65, you are not too old. I get it. It's daunting and it's intimidating at first. And so many questions are running through your head when you're still deciding on whether you should go back to school or not. So we're going to cover some of those questions right now. Question number one. And this is a very common one. Do you need to be great at math? No, you don't have to be great at math. There isn't anything that's incredibly advanced or complex that you're gonna have to cover like differential equations or topology. Fortunately, a lot of math is already done for you through programming packages and classes. So essentially, a lot of that heavy lifting is already taken care of. Though I would recommend that you do refresh yourself on some math and understand some of the logic uh, regarding some concepts. And I'm actually gonna be going through some more in-depth insight on that in a future video. So tune in for that. Question. Number two, and this is kind of a two-in-one question, so we'll call this question number two and question number three. Does computer science require a lot of math courses and specifically, which math courses? Honestly, it differs depending on the school that you go to, but it does seem like most schools do require college algebra, statistics, and calculus one as prerequisites. And I've seen a few schools that do require their students to go through Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and in some cases, Calculus 3. Now, the good news is that if you have already completed a bachelor's program and you've taken some of those math courses, then you wouldn't have to retake those courses in order to join an undergrad program or a master's program. Take a note that there are some CS programs that do have a great threshold and require for you to have at least a B in those specific courses in order for you to enter that school's program. Question number four. Okay, so let's say that you've already taken some of those necessary courses previously, but it's been a while and you feel a little bit rusty. What level of math should you be familiar with at the start of your program? Now, this is based off of my own experience you're good with college algebra. It's all that I refreshed myself on. I made an effort to cover a little over an hour each week for five nights a week for about a total of six to seven weeks. And I didn't even look at any math material for a full month prior to when my first CS class started. And one of those classes was discrete structures, which actually had a good amount of math and I was fine. College algebra, review it for about six to seven weeks, a couple of hours each week, and don't, don't overwhelm yourself trying to learn every detail of it. Just kind of review it and get familiar with it again. And I've already mentioned that I'm gonna upload a video covering a little bit more on the, the math aspects of things. And I'm actually going to include a specific college algebra resource that was extremely helpful for me. Question number five, do you need experience with programming? No. You do not need experience with programming. And I actually know this firsthand. My experience was pretty much non-existent. And just like I showed you at the beginning of the video, I did actually look up some online tools and the first line of code that I ever wrote was actually on Code Academy. And so I probably spent a little over a week you know, just covering some lessons, some very, very, very basic stuff. And that was really it. That was my experience with coding. And then I really didn't write too much code after that until I started my CS program. Other than that, I really just watched a bunch of videos of people coding or running through some exercises like binary search trees. So again, no, you do not need experience with programming, but please, please look up some online tools, actually write some code See if that's something that you can picture yourself doing consistently because you are going to do a lot of it. Please do it. 
Question number six. If you do have experience with programming, which language should you focus on? I only know one language and that's Java. I had no choice. It's what we use in my school. I will however say that the languages that were prevalent whenever I was researching different CS programs were C++ and Java. Both of them are object oriented languages and each has its own advantages over the other one. There are some similarities from what I hear in the syntax and that Java is actually more widely used while C++ is actually faster than Java. Now, I wouldn't put too much time and effort in studying either one until you know which school you're going to attend and which language is used in their program. Question number seven. Do I need a bachelor's in CS to get a master's in CS? No. Fortunately, there are programs that offer a master's in CS, even if you don't have a bachelor's in CS. And that was a great thing for me. It wasn't my goal to get a master's in computer science, but it actually turned out that I would have to take a whole lot more classes if I decided to obtain an undergrad in CS. I also didn't come across a lot of master's programs that actually allowed this. In most cases, you need a bachelor's in CS. And some of them required you to take Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3. But again, there are programs out there for you if you don't have a bachelor's in CS, or if you don't have a lot of experience programming, or if you haven't taken Calculus 2 or Calculus 3. It won't be easy. It's going to be a huge learning curve. But man, if you have the drive and are willing to put in the work, then go for it. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you haven't seen my day in the life of a computer science student video, please go check it out and I've got more videos coming your way. And please remember that even though we can't stop getting older, there's still a lot that you can control. Your effort, your drive, how much work you're willing to put in, pushing yourself even when you're unmotivated at the time. At this point, you've learned from your mistakes, you've gained skills that allow you to plan better and to manage your time more effectively. And those are things that don't go away. You still control that. Use it to your advantage. There's still time. See you guys in the next video.